everybody. So excited to be here today with my special, special guest. And I want to make sure I pronounce your name right. I think I have it right. It's Nini So. You're absolutely wrong. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Talk uh, to my, yeah, my name is Nyaniso. Nyaniso. Perfect. That's okay. it. I, nice. I broke it down a bit slow. But normally you just say Nyaniso. Nyaniso. And, and uh, your last name is? Zedze. Zedze. Nice. Yeah. I love that. Really, really cool. So, yes, I'm so happy that you agreed to be on the show today. I mean, wow, it's just touching to me, humbling, and I'm so grateful. So thank you. And uh, Nini So is joining us all the way from South Africa, guys, South Africa. I think there's a six-hour time difference right now. So is yeah. it, it's what time is it there? Right now here, it's 2 right p.m. Now, it's what for you? 2 p.m. here. 2 p.m. For me, it's 8 p.m. What? Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a big time difference. So thank you for staying up for, to, to talk to me today. But um, nah, I appreciate it. I really, really do. So um, once again, thank you so much for being on the show. I, my show is all about talking to people in all different walks of life that are passionate about what they do. And mm. we know, those of you that know, um, or have seen your work, we know that you're an actor. And yeah. I wanted you to tell us a little bit of today why you chose to be an actor and, and when did you start out on your journey? <laughs> the first thing that came to me was like, I didn't choose acting, acting chose me. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Perhaps that is that is an answer, but it's it's really been something that has been burning in me um, from very early on. Um, I I knew I recognized that um, being a scholar and um, you know getting great marks at school wasn't my thing. Um, I was more inclined to the physical expression, so sports was a thing for me, um, and I didn't because I'm a, I'm. I'm a Virgo, so I'm gonna I'm gonna credit this part of myself to to that. But like I I get really what's the word frustrated when I'm not like the best and like excelling in something that I do, and I hit my frustration patch around about grade ten at school. Um, and I didn't really want to engage in much until I found cheerleading, which was great. Um, uh, yeah, I did some lifts and flicks and stuff. And um, it was only in my uh, 11th year at school, grade 11, that I discovered acting. And um, my history teacher was like, you should go audition for my uh, mom's production at school. And I wasn't really keen on it. I mean, a part of me was like more reserved because of all the, you know, dogmas that people just go on about at school, but ooh, acting is gay for sissies. <laughs> and so I didn't I didn't want to look like a a, a punk. So yeah. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> but um when I did do it, um I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like it took me about a couple of weeks of rehearsals and I was like, this is it. Um, and that's pretty much where, where this flower started to bloom. Mm -hmm. Um, and ever since then, it's just been more about how I took steps towards it from high school to university, studying acting from university, starting to, um, engage more in professional work, dance, theater. Um, and that's been my journey ever since. And I never look back. That's amazing. I, I, it's funny you say when you talk about it chose you, because um, for me, I started out in education, and I love working with kids, but I just felt like it wasn't fully where I wanted to be, and mm -hmm. you know, same thing. I, I started a little bit later than you did in my, in my journey, but yeah. I know that once I did that first read, I was just like, this is it. This is what I have yeah. to do. Just 
it fed my creative soul and it still does to this day. I can't mm. not be without it, you know? So that's awesome. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> we all remember our first job. We all, uh-huh. we all remember it. I, I can remember mine very clearly. It was a, my mom was actually really commercial. I had to do this commercial. I'll never forget it for a car dealership. And, um, you know, I got teased about it for the longest time. That was my first commercial. But my first mm-hmm. legit job, um, like actually on TV, I will also never forget just walking on the set, this, you know, this massive, amazing set. What was your very first job that you ever booked? Very first job was I was in third year at university mm-hmm. and I had a very like proactive friend that was like, you know what? We don't have an exam, so we don't have a real reason to create a production, but I really want to create something anyway. So he wrangled up all of his friends that, um, you know, he enjoyed working with at school and university. Um, and I was one of them. And he's like, we're going to create something. It's going to be an incredible story and we're going to write it ourselves. And we created this piece and he invited professional directors um, who were out there in the industry to come and watch. Um, including normal audiences and stuff. It was a beautiful far out play. It was just something that, um, yeah, it was an expression of the African um, culture pretty much in in the short term and um, planted in today's day and age. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the directors that came to watch it, um, his name is James Noble. And he's internationally claimed for uh, as an actor, but also much more as a theater director. Um, he's actually currently creative director of S- South Africa's more historical and prolific um, theaters called Market Theater. Um, when he came to watch the play, he he saw me and he was like, "I want to cast that guy," and he cast me while I was still a student. And um, he asked me to take part in a play called Thirst, um, which was an adaptation of a a short story called The Water Carriers. And that pretty much set out my my journey. Like that play catalyzed so many big moments in my life, including meeting my wife. Wow. Um, But um, yeah, that was it. That's amazing. First film or television thing. I heard something about you. So, cause you know, I, I, you know, I, I was told through somebody to, you know, when I reached out to you and, um, that you are somewhat of a star in South Africa. Yeah. The soapies, is that what they call them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've got a couple soapies. Yeah. A soapy is like um, Days of Our Lives, I guess. Right. Like soap days. opera. We would call that a soap opera here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, we we'll call them soapies. We like them short, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in South Africa's biggest um, soap opera, which is like a, the Days of Our Lives of, of South Africa. It's called uh, Generations. Um, and yeah that's that's really cool i'm enjoying that i'm learning so much um south africa's legendary actors are on there and i get to work with people that i was watching when i was a kid so it's like uh, like uh, uh, i can't imagine i can't imagine that feeling how long have you have you been doing the soap opera the soapy um i've been on generations for a few months i haven't finished a year yet um and i'm also a part of another soapy um that um is also doing incredible things in the country as well um and i've been a part of that for almost a year um that's called rhythm city so i because i'm a i'm a call actor i get to be a part of more than just like one full-on big project which i enjoy very much because i love to keep my creative mind ticking and challenging myself to, to, to go in different approaches of the art. So in, in South Africa, I'm, sh- I, I'm sure there's lots of differences, which we'll talk about more later, but what's, the, what's your audition process like there in South Africa? Like, do you have like, here in, um, here in, the, in the US, we have, we go to like a casting director and 
we, you know, there's a bunch of people that come and do like, you know, sometimes they're cattle calls, sometimes, you know, they're smaller or we'll just do like a um, chemistry read where we have, you know, two people that they think that work well together. What's the audition process like there? Pretty much the same. Okay. Um, chemistry reads are normally applied to films. Um, and most of the time you would be cast in a normal custom call. Um, I guess cattle calls are when it's like an open call. Yes. Anybody can come. Yeah. Right. Um, those, those aren't so frequent here, but they happen every now and then. Um, most of the time you have to be, um, called through a audition that has been put out to agents. Mm -hmm. So if you're not a part of an agency, right. then you wouldn't mm, be called for a custom. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much the process. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same. Okay. Okay. Is there, is there like a, a lot of actors? It, do a lot of people want to be actors or aspire to be actors in South Africa too? Yeah, yeah a lot, a lot. Um, and because of that, I, I get a lot of people who are either young or untrained DMing me and asking how to how to become an actor and how to get into the industry and stuff like that. And that's something that's that's different about our industry. It's it's a it's a new space that a lot of people are still figuring out how to navigate, how to get into. Um, and there's not as much production of work as there is in America. Um, but yeah, I guess I'd say the, the, the format and the formula is pretty much the same. Um, and just at a smaller scale. A smaller scale. Wow. That's cool. Okay. And you're, you're very talented, obviously. I mean, with acting, I've seen some of your work just phenomenal, just so full of, like I said, my word is passion, just full of passion in everything you do. Mm -hmm. And you so you uh act do you sing i sing you sing i know you dance and that's what i want to talk about next is your dance movie i was yeah. I, I, I i saw that it's it was like the first tell me about that movie it's called uh hear me move yeah yeah hear me move is south africa's first um feature dance film wow. um pretty much south africa's version of step up Mm -hmm. um, but the beauty of it is what we featured and we told the story of South African dance um, more than just trying to fit the picture of the international scape. And so we, we did Spujwa dance, um, which is South African street dance. Um, we did some hip hop and we did Spanzula. And like, that was a beautiful portrayal of what's actually happening here. Um, I was blessed enough to be the Channing Tatum of South Africa for that one. And um, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was such a beautiful experience. It, it still gets aired and played by um, TV channels every now and then. So that's what I was going to say. Is there anywhere we could watch it, the, the, um, the movie, or is it just... Um... No I don't know of any international spaces that it can be watched right now. Um, inshallah, somebody um, of these um, Netflix type um, satellite shows will, will pick it up. Right. But for now, um, no, no. But when it comes up, I'll probably be the first one to post it on Instagram and say, you can catch Yemi Move here. I'm sure you will. Did you have any yeah. part in the actual movie besides acting at all? Like, were you able to give your input or just strictly was it, were an actor in that film? In Hear Me Move. It was pretty collaborative because it was a new experience for everybody. Because um, something that's, that's never been done at that scale. So um, there was a lot of room for, for us to, to, to give voice to what's actually happening with, with um, our characters, with the street life, um, with the culture of the dance. And, and that was such a blessed experience. And, and like the director was young. So um, he, he actually was a guy that I went to university with, but he was a couple of years ahead of me. And so that was, that was a beautiful space where he was just open to go, okay, cool. What do you think about this and stuff like that? And he was receiving what we had to say. Um, and it, it, was, it was beautiful in that sense that we got to collaborate. Very cool. I love that when you're able to actually 
you know, collaborate and work together on something. Did, were you doing yeah. for your acting or is that something you just kind of got into when you started university? Was I what? Were, were you, did, were you like dancing before you started acting or was that just something you kind of got into when you got into university? Um, dance became more of a formal tool when I got into university. It was, it was something that I just liked to do. Um, and when I got to university, I was introduced to physical theater. So telling stories through the body. And from there, some of our physical uh, theater teachers were contemporary dance instructors and performers. And so I got to uh, incorporate some contemporary dance into my, uh, toolkit and um, have done some contemporary dance shows. Um, and that was when I formally put uh, dance as, as a tool in my, in my pocket when I went to university. That you actually used, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Um, with, so going back a little bit, talking about um, tele, film TV in South Africa and the United States, what are some similarities and differences that you see in um, film TV in the United States and film TV in um, South Africa? And one that is, 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 yeah, that's 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 a beautiful question because that's the big thing that hit me when um, we we shot Black as King um, was realizing that in the U.S everybody holds their role as sacred. Mm. Whatever they're doing, it is sacred and they hold it as important from the makeup to the driver, to the catering, to whatever the, their role is, they hold it like it's the most important thing in the world and they execute it with their entire being in comparison to home where I feel like mm, there are standards that some people hold in their minds around, oh, that person's more important than me and my job is less important than that person. And so um, the, uh, the involvement and passion that I see in how people hold their work in the US is, is, is not so much in, in South Africa. And I was like, do you know what? I think we'd create incredibly beautiful work um, at a higher rate if we would allow ourselves to see our jobs as huge no matter what the role is yeah. and that's what i noticed about the the, the contrasting picture between the two um yeah and that's what i really admired about what what goes on in in the u.s and that's something that i took away for myself mm -hmm. as an actually i myself can afford to carry my role more importantly, mm -hmm. what I have to offer more importantly, because at the end of the day, every single thing that everybody does in a production comes together to create this thing that an audience will receive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if one tiny thing is off, we'll see. If the makeup is not on point, we'll see. If the wardrobe looks off, we will see. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if everybody holds their role as sacred and brings the entire body the being to creating gifting that to people um or that production it will illuminate and raise up the entire standard of what we're, we're what we're receiving and that's that's the beauty of it that is beautiful wow i love that yeah it's, it's so you're so you're so right you know because here here you know in a lot of our productions we have what we call the co-star which is yeah. like those one line roles, you know, and a lot of times, you know, but you, you're important too. You're, you're, what you do moves the story along. Maybe you mm -hmm. hand the person the, 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 um, the cup of water that they use to throw it in someone's face later on in the, in the show, you know, like it's, it's, everything is necessary. So that, I never really thought about that before. So yeah. it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I heard, I heard stories I didn't really experience of how, in in um, more international, especially American productions, like <laughs> a person will protect what they have to do pretty much like with their life. And like, you'll hear like um, while an actor's on set and he might like uh, feel like an itch on his face and he'll be like, and you'll hear, don't touch the face. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's, that's the makeup artist going to fuck with my work. <laughs> and uh, so, like, it's it's like it's like you know you, you you might go take take offense to that, but in actuality, you're just realizing how important that person holds their job, yeah, their work. Of course. Um, don't mess with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't mess with yours. So you do you um, and let me do me. Mm-hmm. And because of how they protect and hold, like what we end up seeing is like beautiful. Yeah. And that's why we love what people are doing in America so much because you guys love what you do. We do. We do. We really do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very important to us. Yeah. That's really, that's really cool to know. Good job. Good job, all of us United States people. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Um, so, okay, this is, just a, this is just an interesting point I want to throw out there because I'm so curious. So when you, when you I, I watched some clips of some of your shows, and, and I actually, um, I watched, actually show a Netflix the other day, although they didn't really do it in this show. I think it was called Suddenly Single. Suddenly Single. Mm or something. I can't remember the title, but, um, but I noticed that when you act, you speak some American and some in your, your native tongue, which I guess is South African. Why do you mix it up like that? Like, why don't you just either speak straight African or straight, you know? It's, it's because that's the reality of South Africa, actually. We've got um, 11 official languages, and there are some languages that are still, um, uh, like, you know, haven't been put into the official books. Um, and you would go into the streets, and you hear someone speak English, all great and articulate and stuff, and then halfway through the sentence, and John, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I want all of that. And that's that, like we bounce in between the languages just like that. And sometimes, like, you'd be hearing that language, and then he'd be like, Yeah, I give back the And that's another language. And it's that's that's pretty much the reality of South Africa. So when you watch South African shows, you'll hear people talking like that because we, t- we, we, that's the beautiful thing about South Africa. We, we, we accommodate each other in each other's cultures and each other's differences. like. Well, we don't force each other to be one thing or another. I mean, yeah, those little prejudices ex- exist here and there, but like generally, we're a rainbow nation, as Mandela said. Yes, yes, that's so interesting. Because I'm like watching, I'm like, I wonder what. I mean, I mean, I could follow pretty well, but I'm just like, that's interesting that they kind of switch it, switch it back and forth, you know. So I think that was, I was curious as to why you did that. So mm. this wasn't something I plan on asking you, but do you ever have any aspirations of uh, creating your own work, like as in, in film or a, a film? Like I know for me, I've um, I've done about maybe two and I'm, two short films that I've produced, and I'm about to start mm. another production on another film soon, and mm. with uh, a great director named Jamal Hodge. I bring him up in like every conversation because he's so amazing, but um. But uh, yeah, do you have any like aspirations of doing something like that in the future? Yeah, um, I do. Um, I'm in the I'm in I'm in the very beginning phases of uh, creating a passion project of mine of uh, telling a story of um, men in my culture and how I guess war and violence affects us and and putting in little questions of like where does that stem from? Um, but I also understand that I'm not a writer. Mm-hmm. I'm not a director. I'm not a producer. Yeah. So um, I'm just having together all of those people and all of those roles in order to 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 tell that story. So I'm kind of like the the conceptualizer and the creator of it. But um, it's it's I guess my my current journey is like okay, cool. All the other things that I don't do, who can I find to to help me tell that story? And that's that's my approach on it. But overall and generally, um, I love my role as a carrier of stories, a teller of stories. You give me the story, I'll tell it for you. For you, right? Just let it come through you, go through you. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. 
So, you know, the big question I know that's probably on everybody's mind is we want to know about your, he's like, I can't hear you, sorry. <laughs> we want to know about your experience on Black is King. I yeah. think that 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 film is so beautiful. Like mm. the, 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 um, just the stimulating all of your senses and in the story and in the colors and in the, the, um, you know, the people and, and, you know, the message, there's so much is this visually stimulating story as well as, you know, I was reading that it, it was actually, um, shot internationally, like in all different places. So mm. it, it was just so amazing. And, and, you know, I mean, come on, you're, you were, you were so great in it. I mean, amazing. What was that experience like for you? Thank you. Um, it was, at the time, I didn't realize how important it was to, to be a part of that project and to tell that story. Um, yeah, I, I was up there with everybody being excited that we're going to work on Ms. B's work, um, but I didn't realize how important of a message it was going to be because like i said i was just focusing on the on the little role that i had to play but when i saw the full picture um is when i realized that we were doing god's work mm -hmm. um we were inviting people who had forgotten who they are um where their power stems from, their beauty, um, their greatness, their abundance, and what they have to offer to the world, just how important they are. Mm. Um, and in the words of Rafiki, like, remember who you are. Yes. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what blew me away. I actually got properly blown away by the project afterwards when i saw it it might have um, been thing too for you to kind of just be you you know just be act and just be you in the moment yeah. after filming and then you know yeah. when you saw the, the afterwards you're like wow i was a part of this you know so yeah it might have been yeah. the best you that's too. pretty much it yeah. um, being being in it um on the day to day i just i guess fed off everybody's energy that was around me because it was an international crew um, of just bringing the best of yourself to telling your bit of the story. Um, and that in itself was igniting, inspirational, and really, really special and awakening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah just that's, that's pretty much what it was for me. Yeah. I mean, just like you said, just, um, you know, I feel like I've, I'm, I've been feeling this so much recently, probably in light of all that's going on, just feeling the, the, the presence of our ancestors and just, you know, that's just been coming to me so much lately. And I felt that so much in this film. It's mm -hmm. just so, so uh, deep and eye opening for me. And, um, and I'm looking forward to change in this, in this world. And, and, um, I believe that it starts with us and, and films like this just shows everybody how beautiful that we are. And I think yeah. it's special. The film is, is, is divinely timed in how it came to us because of everything that's going on in the world um, with the Black Lives Matter movement that's happening in America, um, with um, the gender-based violence that's happening in various places in the world, but uh, I'm experiencing quite a lot in South Africa where women are being oppressed and, and feeling the oppression and the violence that's happening out there. Um, and us trying to de-shackle ourselves from, what's that? From oppression, mm -hmm. from slavery um, and, um, how all of that oppression has been um, something that we have been dying to de-shackle ourselves from, to take off and to no longer stand in the shadows of, oh, this is what everyone else says that we're worthy of. Mm -hmm. And going, actually, we are much brighter, much bigger, much more colorful, so much more 
full and have so much more to give to the world than these little boxes that we've been put into. And it's about time for all of us, from even Africans who who know their history and their um, you know ancestry a lot more than Americans and some other places in the world, England and all of black people around the world to, to, to connect to their beauty, no matter where you are in the world. Connect to your beauty, connect to your greatness and realize that um, there's so much more to who you are than what you've been told. And you get to decide what that is. You get to decide how that looks like. And you get to decide what you want to bring to the world and just set yourself free. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. And just before I forget too, thank you so much for, I've watched a few of your um, IG lives of just um, celebrating women. I think mm. that's beautiful. Thank you for doing that. That, that's, that means a lot. So thank you um, for women. I think you've been doing, yeah. So, I, I mean, what, I know this, this once again might be a, a kind of <laughs> dumb question, maybe, I don't know, but what are you most passionate about? Because, and the reason why I say dumb question is because it's obvious, <laughs> you know, it kind of could be an obvious thing, because, you know, we know what you love, but what are you most passionate about in life? I mean, um, if, you know, it's obviously acting, but maybe it's something else, I don't know, you know? Actually, it's not that obvious, uh, at least not at this stage. Um, I'm, I'm most passionate about um, black men, bringing black men to health um, and their emotional bodies, their emotional state, because I recognize that's, that's the root of the hurt that's being experienced out there in the world, whether it's them hurting themselves, them hurting, and them hurting others around them. Um, I know this is this 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 um, goes beyond just black men. It's actually also men as a whole. But um, as a black man, I feel the responsibility to to shine a light and to bring health to that in my own capacity. Um, and I'm really passionate about reminding the black child that you can dream, um, and you're worthy of so much more. Um, you know, being in South Africa just just coming out of um a bad date which is like you know um its own little fractal of uh, slavery um we many of us still carry these oppressive digressive beliefs that um we'll never amount to much and um we're lesser than others we're lesser than white people we're lesser than um people who come from the city or whatever, but like, I'm just reminding everybody that um, all of the black children to dream and that your dreams are valid and that you should, can make them come true. And that's my, that's my deepest passion. And so with everything that I do as an actor, I'm remembering that whatever story I'm telling, I'm telling this story to show a black man what's going on in them and how they can look at themselves differently. Um, with every story that I tell, with every role that I take on, I'm reminding some black child somewhere um, that can identify with my color, my um, background, um, my culture, whatever. Whatever they can identify with me, I'm reminding them that you can be more and you can do more. So beautiful. I knew I'd be inspired by you. About to be, make me cry. I can't. That is just wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Deep. That's, we need that. We need that. Our world needs that. And, and, I, and I believe what you're saying. And now it makes so much sense to me when I watch you act because you feel like, you know, when some people act, you know, they talk about head actors. When you act, it's like from your head to your toes to the tips of your fingers. It's like through your whole body. So mm. that means that you are letting it flow. The story of, of, like you said, of every, of whoever you're, um, you know, portraying or just of just 
the, the, the race or whatever in general flow through your body and, and speak and it, it really shows. So mm. that's re- I love that. That's really great. Thank you once again. Yeah. Thank you. You know, seeing that there's a need there and, um, you know, lifting up people and, and encouraging us and, and men to follow their dreams, you know. So that's yeah. really, really great. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. So exciting. Um, so, yeah, let, <laughs> let's switch gears a little bit now. I know we got in all the heavy stuff. So now let's just be like, all right, let's just, just chill now as we wrap up here. Tell yeah. me, let her hair, let your hair down. <laughs> Tell me something um, fun or, oh, I'm, st- I'm sorry. I'm still taken back by what you just said. Ooh, give me a second. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me, tell me something fun mm-hmm. about you or something mm-hmm. that people don't know about you. <laughs> Interesting fact. Yeah assuming that not many people know me that means they don't know much um geez i forgot what what i initially wanted to share about like what what could possibly be something fun that people might not know about me um it's okay i love what i do Uh, (laughs) um I, I I am I am a deeply spiritual man and connected to my culture and I I I I have found a connection that is so tangible and real that makes ancestors um, not only just like a, a myth or an idea but a reality um, and basically to just give you a little. Um, breakdown of how I see it it's our ancestors are our forefathers it's my mother and her mother and the mother that bore her and the mother that bore her and same thing going with fathers as well and so when I connected to ancestors I'm not connecting to some um, idea of the stars and the kings that lived eons ago and yes I am connecting to those but in actuality I'm seeing the through line that connects me to them and so um, when I talk to them I sit down and I allow myself to connect to them in me because their blood has flowed and flowed and eventually catalyzed who I am right now. So yeah, I guess that's one interesting thing about me. Um, And for me, that also goes hand in hand with God, with spirit, um, the infinite light. And that actually is the eventuality um, of me as well or um, the eventual catalyst of me as well so I'm also allowing myself to see God in me too through that same picture mm-hmm. nice. wow. um, I don't know how fun that was but <laughs> it's, it's interesting I said fun or interesting so you're good <laughs> I mean I was just thinking you'd say you know I like to go on long walks on the beach or you know <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. Scared of snakes? <laughs> oh my gosh, I saw one the other day. Yeah, I'm terrified. Keep that to yourself. How <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, I think of something fun. I'm putting on the spot with this one, but I thought it'd be interesting or fun to um to see like expressions or phrases that you say that maybe I say differently you know, that Americans say differently. For example, I think uh, when we first talked or something, you said like, I'm, I'm keen or something like that. And I was like, at first I'm thinking, what did he mean by that? Uh Keen, what is that? I mean, I wasn't sure how you meant to use that. So like, that's what I mean. Like, you know, like phrases like that. Is there any, some like phrase that you use that we don't use? Uh, Oh, okay. On a, on a, on a, on the, on a social front, um there's probably quite a few um like like say it and i'll try to guess what you mean by it we say shop shop yeah shop means 
So cool. just shop. Well, shop. Oh, okay. I was gonna say shopping. For me, shopping cool. when I go to the store. And like, <laughs> like when, when you're saying something to somebody, and 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 typically in America, you'd say, "Okay, cool, got you." Okay. Sometimes, often, you'd hear um, someone say, "Shop, got you." Shop, shop. Yeah. Shop. Yeah. But you know, personally, I make up I make up words to to adorn and to celebrate people whenever I'm I'm chatting to them. So if I'm talking to somebody, I'd call them leader, I'd call them teacher, I'd call them king. Okay, king is something that's being used more and more these days, king, queen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my thing is like when I call people, I'm like, no, my leader, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> And and um, I guess it's my way of to to keep injecting love between whatever engagement I'm having with anybody, so that whatever it is that I'm saying, it's still being received with love. And like, ah, oh, now nah, I'm seeing the greatness in you, beauty in you, and celebrating you, no matter how it is that we're talking. Yes, it's kind of like a nickname or a pet name, where you just like, yeah, like like an endearing work term. Yeah, endearing is more like it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, all of my other interesting stuff that flew out the window right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. So that's good. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Anything, any other last words you want to share or put out any message you want to put out there to the world before we um, close? Yeah. To anybody and everybody around the world, but most especially people of color. Um, your ancestors and your ancestry is is within you, um, and you don't have to feel like you don't belong or that you're lost because you don't know the kings of yonder um, that you come from, because you do come from them, but um, allow yourself to be um, worthy of your throne now um and allow yourself to connect to your ancestry now from your very name and let that guide you to connecting to the abundance of you and i guess that's what i feel like sharing beautiful beautiful well thank you so much <laughs> for being present today and i want to wish you nothing but the best in your future career and what what's to come and i feel like abundance is coming your way and i want to you know when you whenever you come to the states next time let me know get some people together we'll have some fun um and whenever i come to south africa i want to come because i want to get some pictures by that photographer that you use who's amazing <laughs> um but um but yeah i really feel so honored to to have this conversation with you today and thank you so much thank you and then one final thing i want to say is um who wherever you feel called to go visit and to to connect to and identify with yourself go south africa kisha come yes. wherever um just go uh, and um it's 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 more accessible than we 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 think it is we like to think it's so far away and mm -hmm. oh the motherland is so scary and big and oh animals all over the place and whatever and yeah there are some places that have that but wherever you feel go to, to call to go connect go go i like um, i love it i've been Fine. visiting a few countries around the world myself like um oh, South african countries actually um and and realizing how much i've got to learn about my beautiful brown people mm. And yeah, it's like even as as a South African who is in the continent of Africa, I've still myself got so much to learn. And if we've got a lot to learn, then allow yourself to be open to learning too, wherever you are in the world. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah, so true. Get connected. <laughs> Get connected. Thank you, Mama. Thank you for making the time, and thank you for inviting me to be a part of your um, page, your story, your uh, sure. channel. Thank you so much. This was a blast. I had so much fun. I am so excited. Um, you know, I like I have I have no words. I have no, mm. words. I have no words. This is Thank you. wonderful. God brought us together. Um, and you know, just for me, it's, you know, same thing. I just I just decided to start this, 
you know, are, are you guys do that? Are you guys quarantining there too? Or is like, are you got going through the whole quarantine like we are here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've gone through various levels and phases and I don't know if you guys do that too. We were at like phase five where it was like absolute lockdown and nothing was functioning except for the bare minimums. Um, and then they softened the, 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 you know, rules and stuff, um, level four, three. Now we're at level two where people are allowed to go back to work, but we are, have to wear masks um and they've opened up um leisure um businesses and stuff like that and alcohol and cigarettes was locked away up until like uh, a week ago and so um all of the small prisons oh, like, uh, get <laughs> everybody get to get their vices back right. um, so, wow um, so yeah. that's how it's been for us how's it been for you guys same, same. I mean, we're finally getting out. We wear masks everywhere. Um, you know, we were able to eat out, eat at restaurants, but all outside. So we're like mm. outside at tables and stuff. But um, mm. yeah, it's still very locked down. The schools are kind of iffy as to whether they're slaughtered or not. Um, mm. It's crazy. It's so, it just feels surreal. Like, I'm like, is this the, the world? Like, you know, when is it going to end? You know, it's just like, it feels like there's no end. Productions are starting up slowly, but yeah. Here's a question. Um, what do you feel like this whole period is about from an energetic place and a spiritual place? I feel like this is this has been a time for everybody to stop and slow down. Yeah. Because you know, it's, it's amazing to me, like some, so, you know, if I'm driving my car somewhere, I'll see like whole families, you know, riding their bikes up the street. When was the last time mm. that ever happened? Mm. You know, like them being, you know, being together as a unit, you know, where mom mm. dad's at work, da, 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 you know, you know, and, and it's forcing people to kind of, you know, and some people could probably go the opposite direction into depression and stuff. But I know people that, you know, are most people that I know, we are kind of regrouping and restructuring things. And um, some, I mean, I, I actually do, my side hustle is uh, real estate. I sell real estate and mm. um, real estate has, is going insane. So many people are buying stuff right now because, you know, mm. interest rates are low. So people are positioning themselves, you know, in a better place to when they come mm. out of this. Not to say once again, a lot of people are in really bad place, but I'm just saying that, you know, I feel like in, as far as like in a, in a spiritual sense, I feel like more it's like, okay, you all need to just stop because the world is just moving too fast. Um, you know, we need to stop. Um, the sad part about it is just the loss of life, but um, you know, I don't know. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, um, it's been a lot of stopping and self-reflection and an invitation to look within mm -hmm. and, uh, to just get in connection with the truth of who you are mm -hmm. um, and who you you call to be, mm -hmm. and that's 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 been that's been what I've been experiencing, and also I've seen that a lot of people that haven't allowed themselves to look in into that direction, those are the people that that struggle, those are the people that face the depression. Um, and feel being hit by this period the hardest right because we are so used to outsourcing our happiness mm. our engagement mm. our fulfillment mm. and looking within and connecting with just the self and uh, getting into the sincerity of what's actually moving is something foreign to so many of us um and like even god the universe is busy going i think you need to stop with the technology <laughs> yeah, and slow down <laughs> with leaning on boyfriends <laughs> and girlfriends and people and parties and things to to make you feel like you're fulfilled okay. and get in connection with mm. who you are and, 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 it's, and it's a true testament to finding out who you are because, you know, people are confronted with, um, uh, you know, adversity, 
you know, what are you going to do? There's one of two paths you can take, you know, you can, you can either pick yourself up and be like, all right, fine, I'm going to do this. Or you can just, you know, like you said, go down that path of like, I give up hopeless, you know, you have to, you know, and you know, I've always wanted that person that it's like, you know what, if you say I can't do something, I'm going to do it. <laughs> or, you know, if, if this is mm-hmm. what life has given me, I'm going to overcome it, you know? So mm-hmm. It's really given us all an opportunity, like to see what we're really made of, you know. Yeah. Um, and like I said, this this what I'm doing now is a result of this. It's something I've always wanted to do, but mm. I've done it. Hey, I got all this time in my hands. Why not start? You know. So that's what I, you know, that's what I did, and uh, I feel like, you know, I pray that everyone finds a way to try to just take advantage of it you know, the time of, like you said, a self-reflection and come back stronger than ever when everything does mm. open up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I can, yeah. I can pray the same thing. Yeah. You know, I forgot to ask you another question too, man. Hit me. I could still ask you. Go on. It was a Black is King. I was going to ask you, what's your, what was your favorite uh, part that you played in the, in the um, film? Like what scene uh, was your favorite? Oh, there's this scene that didn't make it. Of course, <laughs> we're all used that to didn't that. Make the final cut. We're all used is to when that. Simba and Scar face off. Uh-huh. Um, and there was this beautiful moment between myself and the actor that was playing Scar, Warren Masamola incredibly insanely talented oh, South African actor um he's 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 yeah he's loved by everybody oh. so anyway we had this moment of just like really getting what what was required of us in that moment mm-hmm. and um giving unreservedly to each other that the emotional brokenness that was happening between this young man and this older man that had let down the younger man. Mm. Um, And when we shot that, everybody, including the director, was just like sharing about how beautifully sincere and potent that moment was really um that was my favorite part to shoot wow. and like warren and i like we 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 never really worked together up until that project and and that was such a beautiful moment to say um yeah i got to share that with my brother um, that, was, that was amazing i hope they put that yeah. the extended dvd cut <laughs> <laughs> who knows because <laughs> i want to see who it knows? <laughs> Wow, well, thanks. That's cool. Dude, this is so wonderful. I could like talk to you forever. It's so interesting and so I love everything you have to say. It's so good. But um mm-hmm. I know we have to end. So just another excuse to try to connect again in the future. Um, but you know, thank you so much for your your heart, your time and your mm-hmm. um, you know, your your graciousness. I appreciate that. So thank you again. Mm-hmm. All right. Appreciate that very much. Very, very wonderful. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. This was a really special episode, and I'm so grateful and thankful for Nianiso to join us on the show. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please continue to follow my show at Keisha Bar on Instagram and on YouTube for more content just like this, following people that are passionate about everything that they do. I want to thank you for watching. Have a good day.